Monday, everyone. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's Monday already. But I say that every day. Every day I come on here, I'm like, I can't believe it's Monday. I can't believe it's Tuesday. I can't believe it's Wednesday. But it is Monday and we are going to um, have a great live show. Good morning, Valerie. And yes, we are going to, good morning all, hope everyone had a nice weekend. We did. I, I mean, well, I don't know we, but I had a, a very nice weekend. And we're going to talk about that because I have all sorts of things to tell you today. I mean, not only are we going to be looking at some vegetarian recipes, I'm going to give you my little backstory as to why I went vegetarian. But um, I had a lot of things going on this weekend, and I can't wait to share them all with you. Now, a lot of times I have been like, um, what's going on? You know, like what's going on in the world? And I actually did my little search and I'm like, no, that's negative. Well, that isn't positive. Well, that's not very happy. And I'm like, no, you know what? I am not going to start my show off with any sort of negativity. So we are only going to have positive thoughts today. And in that context, we are actually going to pull a um, self-love shower affirmation from Dove. They sent me this with some shampoo, and I like to just start things off positivity with some positivity as much as I can. But it says that this is what you're supposed to tell yourself, but it says, I am capable of doing hard things. I get better every single day. And you know what? That's true. We, we, we can do and we can get over and we can face more obstacles than we give ourselves credit for, period. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. But when we stop and we actually look, we look at the problem, sometimes it seems insurmountable, but we've conquered bigger things and you know we've gotten over bigger obstacles. So just remember, you are capable of doing hard things and you get better every single day. So there you go. We're starting off the week with some positivity. All right. So today I am um, so excited. I'm going to San Francisco tomorrow. And I, of course, am bringing you along with me because I am making a couple of videos while I'm there. And the first one I'm going to make is like um, the day in the life of going to San Francisco for a day. So I'm going to be filming and doing all sorts of cool things while I'm there. And then also, too, I'm going to do a video of my actual haircut, but I want to edit it and do it in like a Wes Anderson movie. And I was like, because I love Wes Anderson, I love his movies, so I'm going to make it really artsy. Tina says, hi, Lonnie. I'm so happy to see you live. I, you always put a smile on my face when I see you. Tina, I was thinking about you this morning and don't think I'm weird or anything, but I was like actually in the shower this morning and I'm like, oh, it's Monday. Tina's going to be with us on Monday. So I hope you know how much I appreciate you um, and everything that you do for the platform. But yeah, and, and please, again, don't think like I'm a weirdo and I was thinking about you, but that's where it came to my realization that you were going to be joining us today. So San Francisco tomorrow, super excited. What I'm not super excited about is the simple fact that I will be waking up at two o'clock in the morning to get to LAX to get on a plane by six o'clock in the morning. So that when you put that into context, it's like, oh my gosh, why are you wait? Why would you do that? But I wake up anyway at four o'clock in the morning so it's like ah what's a couple of more hours but here's the cool thing it's like we land in san francisco i think like at 7 30 so we'll be in the city by 8 8 30 something or along there and we go to just a really cool coffee shop in north beach um and it in that it's called either North North Beach or Little Italy. It's called both of those things. But um, love you, Lonnie. No way do I think you're the weird, a weirdo. Um, yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But I am kind of weird. <laughs> but anyway, so we we get there really early, and we go to a coffee shop, and I get just a ginormous. Um, cappuccino, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to treat myself to a pastry. And I just sit there on a, the sidewalk cafe 
and I just get to stop and self-reflect and I'm bringing a journal and I've got all sorts of cool ideas that I want to start doing. So that's one of the reasons why we get up so early to go so we can just have that time to where we're sitting there and not doing anything. And then we'll get our hair cut and then um, we are going to have lunch with my barber who's my very good friend. And then um, we're going to go down to Market Street. There's not much left there, but there's still a Doc Martin store there. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to take a look at some sandals. So, and um, so from there, we might grab like, you know, like a smoothie or something, get back on the BART, go back to the airport and fly home. And I should be home by nine o'clock. And so that's going to be my day tomorrow. And I'm super excited. I've already have my outfit picked out and I'll show you what I'm going to wear um, that I have picked out in my mind. I'll show you that in a minute. And I don't know, it's just really cool. So I won't be on live tomorrow because um, I will be hopefully sitting in that coffee shop in North Beach, but I'll be back Wednesday. And when I come back on Wednesday, I got my... Um, my makeup that we're going to be doing that that nude lip that whole TikTok thing um, it's everywhere on TikTok, and it's a combination of a mac liner and a mac lipstick it, it i just saw TikTok after TikTok of just this really cool nude lip so if ever i'm going to be able to do a nude lip it is going to be with this combination and that's what we are doing on wednesday so this weekend, I, I do want to let you know a couple of things. Um, this weekend, I did go and I got my facial on Saturday. I go once a month for a, like a facial treatment and I get a what's called a microderm abrasion. And what a microderm, um, yeah, Courtney, you know what? If that doesn't work out, I want to, I'm going to try that color that you suggested. Valerie says, we will miss you tomorrow, but I hope you have an amazing time. Thank you. And it's it's really weird because it's like I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna, I'm I'm not gonna be with them tomorrow. And I I I really, really look forward to my morning lives with you all, just so y'all know that. So I got a microderm abrasion. And what a microderm abrasion is, let me tell you exactly what it is. It says it is an exfoliation process that gently removes the outer layer of your skin where the dull, dead skin cells lie. The treatment uses tiny crystals that break up these cells to reveal a smoother, softer skin underneath. The crystals are generally worked into your skin by a handheld device. So what it is is like, it's it's almost like, uh, you know when you can go and you can rent one of those um, carpet cleaners and it like shoots the water into the carpet and then you're like, and you, you suck up all the dirt. Well, it's kind of the same thing, but for your face. And it's, it's really kind of weird because like the first time I had it done, it was like little, like you, you feel like the little pricklies. It's like, and then, but you feel it like shooting like water into your skin and then sucking it out all at the same time. The first time I got it done, I thought it was kind of a weird sensation. Now that I do it all the time, I'm like, ooh, this is really cool. I like this. And the reason I'm telling you about it is because every month my esthetician is super cool. And she's like, okay, what have you done different this month, Lonnie? Because she knows I'm constantly trying new products and I'm trying new things. So I'm like, well, I haven't done too much difference. The only thing I've done different is, is that I'm now using the Pond's Cold Cream to remove my makeup and I am using the Noxzema to clean my face. And then I'm slugging with my Vaseline, you know, basically keeping everything the way that, that it normally is. I was wondering what that noise was. You know, I'm like, yeah, you're not going to see much difference. So I'm laying there and she's like, <laughs> she does it. They do it twice. And she takes off the little jar because you can actually see the stuff that they remove from your face. And instantly she's holding it up and she's like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you have a lot of dead skin cells. She goes, this is way more than usually I see from one of these treatments. And I'm like, well, let me see, let me see. So I'm looking at it and it's just this jar of like, um, kind of like, I don't know, like dirty water. 
And good morning, Kelly. Oh my gosh, Kelly's back. She was gone last week because she had some procedures done, but she is back. Um, so it was like this, this cup of like, I don't know, kind of like swamp water. And it had little, I could see the particles going around the water. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm like, what does that mean? You know, I have, I told you the only thing I've done different is how I'm cleaning my face. I'm still slugging it. And she said that she thinks it's because all of that slugging that I'm doing, it's adding so much moisture to my skin that it's now, it's not allowing it to basically like exfoliate itself. Tina says, I've never had a facial. One of my friends gets them all the time. She's trying to talk me into getting one. I need to do that. Tina, I will not steer you wrong, but once you get your first facial, you're going to want it over and over again. To me, it is the most relaxing treatment that you can get. I just lay there and I... It, She's talking to me, but I know that I am not making any sense about the things I'm saying because I'm so relaxed. I'm like, da, 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 da. it is an amazing thing. So getting back to my treatment. So she, she said that by doing all of that slugging, it is basically just sealing in the moisture, which is great because that's exactly what I wanted because I noticed with the slugging that my fine lines and my wrinkles are um, minimizing because I'm actually getting that moisture back into my face. So I'm like, well, darn, you know, it's like on one hand, I wanna keep slugging because I want that extra moisture. But on the other hand, I'm like, but if I don't get rid of that dead skin cells and stuff throughout the month, I'm going to have a little bit more of a duller looking skin. So we came up with a solution. And that's why I'm telling you is that if you do that slugging, um, if you have that really intense moisture kind of routine in your, your, your skincare routine, you need to exfoliate. So I am going to start incorporating into my skincare routine i'm going to have the pons cold cream to remove my makeup of course i'm going to keep using my noxema but about every other day i am going to start using an exfoliating cleanser and i had gotten this from murad they sent me this and it's a really cool cleanser but it says that you're only supposed to use it two to three times a week because it's a pretty intense exfoliator. So I'm gonna be using that. And if you're like, well, you know what? I want to exfoliate or I want to kind of like remove those skin cells, but I don't wanna spend that much money. Another alternative is this super brightener. This is from e.l.f. and y'all know how much I, I love e.l.f. and everything about their products. But this, it smells like Jean de Tay. That's what it smells like. And if you're anywhere near my age, you know what Jean de Tay is. If you're not, it was the most amazing body splash in the 70s that you would buy like in a gallon. And you'd just be like, splash, splash, splash. This smells just like Jean de Tay. So what this is, these are little wipes. And you will, after you wash your face, whatever skincare um, cleanser you're using, I would just about every other day, I would take one of these wipes and I would wipe it off. And this is going to, again, it's going to remove the, um, the built up dead skin and all of that. And then you can slug right over the top of that and keep that moisture locked in. But if you're like me and you were using that slugging routine, you're going to want to exfoliate somewhere along the week to make sure that you keep your, um, your skin fresh. So that is my tip for today. Also too, because I'm constantly um, trying to improve my skincare routine and I'm always trying to try out different variations. I do want to let you know that with my neck, my neck is my, um, it's my problem child. Let's just call it that. My neck, I totally ignored um, sunscreen moisturizer on my neck for decades and I am paying the price now. So what I'm going to be doing is, is that 
um, every other day or every other night, I'm going to start using a retinol rescoped rescope overnight treatment on my neck. So I'm going to do my regular um, slugging one night. The next night I am going to put on my Murad, I'm going to mix it up with like a little bit of a moisturizer because I don't want it to be too intense because what a retinol does is it basically damages your skin and it forces your body to make more collagen. It's kind of like when we get older, we naturally stop making that collagen kind of thing that um, gives us a little bit of the wrinklies that go on. But if you use a retinol, it kind of damages your skin and your body's like, oh my gosh, we need to make more collagen. Everybody get over there, make collagen. And it forces your body to do that. So while in theory, I know it works, I'm always kind of leery about doing anything that damages my skin. So I am going to mix this with a moisturizer and I'm going to put that on my neck every other day to see how I like that. Because again, I am the experimenting one and I like to be able to tell you like this really works or this really doesn't work, but I'm going to be super excited to see how this works. And then when I was talking to her, she mentioned again the little things on my neck that I have to get taken care of. And I do have a doctor's appointment on the 7th of July. So, of course, I'm bringing you with me. And I am going to be seeing, um, just make sure that I don't have any problems with my skin. So I thought that that was pretty cool. And I wanted to tell you about those skincare items. I did go to um, Orange County this weekend and I did some filming. And I don't know, your girl here, sometimes time management is my, um, is not my strong suit because I'm all like in my brain, I had everything all worked out. I'm like, wake up, you know, get dressed, do my social media, go get some coffee, drive into Orange County, go to Goodwill, go here, go here film, 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 come home in plenty of time for my facial appointment at two o'clock. Then reality hits and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about Orange County traffic. So I did not get nearly as much filmed as I had wanted to, but what I did film was super cool because I found a Goodwill in Orange County. And if you're not familiar with San Diego, or with California or Southern California, Orange County is a very expensive um, county. It's where you have the real housewives of Orange County. Um, you have Selling Sunset in Orange County. I mean, the medium price house is over a million dollars. So I'm like, I wonder what rich people thrift. And so I went to the Goodwill and I found a couple of things. I wasn't like totally blown away. But on the loudspeaker, they're like, well, if you want some designer items, be sure to go next door to our keeper store and they're all there. And I'm like, Doing! so I'm like, okay, finish, finish, finish. And then I went next door. I went to the keeper store, which was actually really cool. And I can't tell you too much because I made a video out of it and I want you to be surprised on the video, but I got two jackets and a Marc Jacobs skirt for 30 bucks. And they are cool and amazing. So I did that and I thought it was, it's going to be a really cool video. I really do like that. And I will be going back there. But the next time I go thrifting, thrifting, I want to find a thrift store in like Beverly Hills or, you know, someplace like that because I'm only like an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes away from Beverly Hills. And so I'm like, I have to just take a day, maybe take a Saturday, or I can take off after our morning show. And I want to go thrift in a place like that. And I thought that that would be a lot of fun. Um, so we'll have to do that. Now, I do want to show you something because I went to Target yesterday. And by the way, I was totally blown away by how much... Um, how much everything costs these days. I was like, oh my Lanta, when did this happen? So I went to Target yesterday and I want to show you, hold on here. 
I want to show you these pair of pants I found, which I thought were very cute, but you need to take a look at them first. Let's see here. We have, oh gosh, if I could remember where I put things. I have, oh, here they are. All right, so let's take a look at these. I was at Target and I was shopping and I found these really cute cargo pants. And I'm like, oh my gosh, these are super cool. Now the color of these cargo pants are mauve and the color in person is really just it was like a really I keep saying cool but it was a really cool color and the pants were much longer than they are on her and I was like oh these are really cool I could make so many cute outfits out of this and then I looked at the price and I'm like why are Target pants $30 and I looked at them and I in good faith could not buy the I couldn't buy them for $30. And I don't know if I'm getting cheaper the older I get, but it's just to me it's like I don't know. If I'm going to go to H&M, I want H&M prices to be reasonable. If I am going to shop on Amazon and I'm going to get a free people like item, I want them to be a substantial savings. Otherwise, I just don't have the motivation to buy a knockoff of something if I'm not saving a lot of money. And I know that I say this all the time and it all comes down to um, pricings, but you know what truth, I, I would rather go to a thrift store with that $30 and find an entire outfit than to just get one pair of Target pants for 30 bucks. And I mean, maybe, maybe that's not the right way to look at it, but I'm going to stand by my statement. And I was just a little disappointed that Target pants are now that much. So I'm going to have to go to Walmart and see how their prices are. Because I've been a Target fan for as long as I can remember. And um, I was just bummed. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, that's a lot of, Tina says that's a lot of money for Target. And I agree. Like I said, when I was, when I found those pants, I'm like, oh, ooh, I bet you they're going to be like $19.99, something like that. And when I saw the price tag of 30 bucks, I was like, nope, not today. I, I just, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that today. So I do, see, I told you, we have so many things to look at today. And we still have to talk about vegetarian stuff. Now, I do want to show you my favorite outfit of the week, and I'm going to show you this because I wanted I want you to look at it, and then I'm going to show you something on free people. So my favorite outfit from last week is, doo -doo -doo, hold tight, let me gear this one up because I'm all about technology these days, and... Ignore the goofy look on my face, but here is my favorite outfit from last week, and it's these really cool cargo, sh not, not cargo shorts, but they're like Bermuda shorts, and I've been absolutely obsessed with them. I have my Majestic Mary Janes on. Of course, I still have my scab knee from when Andy knocked me down, and I paired them with that Michael or the Carl Lagerfeld purse, which has turned out to be such a great buy. I am so glad that I found that and I got it because I wear it every single day. But these shorts right here, they are a loose, um, not cargo shirt, but almost like, not a short, but... Doo -doo -doo. I'm trying to think of the name. Oh my gosh, I'm totally just... Um, I am pulling a blank as cargo shorts. Are they cargo shorts? No, they're not cargo shorts because they would have the pockets. Bermuda, that's the word I'm thinking of. They remind me of a Bermuda, um, Bermuda shorts. And I have been all obsessed about these. So I found these at, love watching your weekly outfits, you always look great. Thank you, Tina. It's, it's been really fun to do. I film myself every single morning. So then that way I can show you all what I wear. Oops, 
on a daily basis. So let me come back here. Now those shorts, I have been obsessed with those shorts and I am going to show you why. Because I found these on Free People. And let's see here, let's go here. And nope, let's go down there. I am so still learning all about our technology. Okay, so on the Free People website, let me show you what I'm looking at here. I am so proud of myself with my little slideshow. You have no idea how long I had wanted to implement this. And now that I actually have it, it just brings me so much joy. So I, you know me, I'm always on the Free People website and I'm always looking for cute outfits and I'm always looking for outfit inspiration. And what I did is I saw these shorts here. For when, These are the um, Reina cargo shorts for $148. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to spend $148. And then I saw these and these are these really cool barrel shorts. And I'm like, I love these, but I don't want to spend $128. So I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And what I did is I was at H&M because I filmed a video for H&M, but I saw those shorts that I showed you and they were $24. And what I did is I sized up, super sized up because I wanted them to hit me on my hips. I wanted them to be baggy because I wanted that vibe. So instead of spending $128, I found shorts that were so similar for $28. And if you sit there and if you look at websites or shopping, you know, like um, shopping apps like Free People, if you're like, I like the style, but I can't afford it, that there's nothing wrong with that. You can still look at those websites. You can still get the inspiration. And then when you're at places that are a little bit more affordable, if you find something that has that same vibe or that same look, grab it. Because I'm telling you right now, nobody would know at looking at that outfit that I didn't get that entire outfit at Free People because it had the same feeling. So I thought that that was super, um, super cool. And I wanted to show you that, but I'm not done there because what I want to show you is this right here. So this morning when I was getting this all together, because originally I was just going to show you this and show you those denim shorts, I saw these. And I'm like, ooh, those are cool, off the grid solid shorts. And they are $68, they're very cool. They have these little like, little like um, ties, you know, like the little things that you can adjust them, you can make them tighter, you can make them shorter. They have these cool little pockets right here. And like I said, they're 68 bucks and they have them in black, very cute correct? Well, now here's the thing. I was at Marshall's the other day because I was picking up Indy some more of her toys because she goes through them so fast. I have to get them at a discount place. But what I found was these shorts and I want to show you. <laughs> Hold on. Technology at its best. But, all right, so let's look at these. Mm -hmm, come back here. Look at these shorts. I found these shorts at Marshall's for $14. And they look almost exactly like the ones on Free People for $68. And they have the same little, um, like the little pull tabs on the waist. They have the same concept of the pockets. They fit great. I absolutely love the fit of these. Um, very lightweight material. Oh, there I am again. Look, eee, there's my jeans again. But, oh, oh, but I mean, $68 compared to $14. And had I have not been like totally obsessed with free people and always on their website, I never would have really have thought of like putting two and two together of like, 
wow, that really has a free people vibe. So um, I love them. They're so pretty. Thank you. Yeah. And, and that's just the whole thing. And that what is bringing me to the moral of this little story is that um, it, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get the look that you're looking for, but you need to know your style and you need to know what you like. And so once you have that idea, when you go shopping, it is absolutely, it just opens up so many possibilities of buying things at great prices. Now, this brings me to a subject that um, I was just talking to TikTok about. And what I'm going to be doing, and I need to put this together, and I'm not really 100% sure how I'm going to do it, but I want to start doing um, some sort of like being a personal stylist for you all, where we would get like on a Zoom call, and you could show me your closet, you could show me some clothes that you have, and I could give you some ideas on how to put things together, maybe things to um, alleviate out of your closet. Um, bungees, that's what they're called. Thank you, Tracy. Um, alleviate things out of your closet, like maybe some ideas of things that you need to go um, have staples in your closet. So I'm playing around with, and I need to figure out how I can do that, how I can set up some sort of thing where I can be a personal stylist for you all. And I'm super excited about that. And that's something that, again, it's been in the back of my mind, but I'm going to have to work on making that a reality because I think that that would be fun. And you know me, I love clothes and I love to put outfits together. And I think that, I don't know, I just think it would be something really cool. So now, um, oh, so let's see, what time is it? Okay, 31. Let's go ahead and talk about the main subject that we are all talking about today, and that's being a vegetarian. And I started being a vegetarian right after my mom passed away. My mom passed away in 2016, and yes, I had to look at my arm. Her, um, her date is tattooed onto my arm. But when my mom was passing away, it was a really difficult time for me. And I found that I was starting to have stomach issues and I just constantly had an upset stomach and I couldn't figure out why, why all of a sudden is my stomach just upset all the time. So I decided to start doing like I've mentioned before and started doing a food diary, something to where every time I ate, I would write down how I felt and I started being like, well, maybe I need to alleviate gluten. So I, every time I ate bread or something with gluten in it, I'd write it down. I'd be like, nope, still feel great. Still, just, I don't feel any different. And then I went from like um, dairy. I thought maybe I had an issue with dairy. Nope, no different there. Then when I stopped eating meat, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm starting to feel better. Oh, my stomach's not as upset. So I decided for myself that I was going to alleviate meat out of my diet and I have never gone back. I have been a vegetarian now since the very ending of 2016 and it's something to where I don't miss, I don't miss meat in my diet and I hear a lot of, um, I am, I, I, I know I hear this all the time. It's like, well, what about like your, your, are you, do you have iron? Are you vitamin deficient? You know, are you getting this and are you getting that? And it is something to where, you know, I don't think meat is a cure-all to the point where it's like, I'm eating meat. So I have every vitamin and supplement or every vitamin and nutrient that I need. I think that we need an all over balanced diet, whether or not you're a vegetarian or whether or not you eat meat. But it says, according to the American Diabetic, I'm sorry, according to the American Dietetic Association, um, appropriately planned vegetarian diets, including total vegetarian or vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide benefits in the prevention of certain diseases. So you can still have a very good um, diet if you're having a vegetarian diet. You just, again, like I said, even if you're eating meat, you need to plan your meals accordingly and make sure that you have all the vitamins and nutrition that you need as 
a woman of whatever age you are. So I don't worry about not having enough iron or having enough um, fiber because I do supplement that a lot. I have, um, I have some vegan drinks that like a protein shake that is specifically made for vegetarians or vegans that add those nutrients back that I might be lacking with my meat. So if you are thinking at all that you want to try a vegetarian diet, just go into it with no supplements or anything like that to, so that you have a healthy diet. Tina says, I am not a vegetarian, but I don't eat red meat. It's not something I really like. I eat a lot of veggies, fish and chicken, etc. Yes. And that's how I started into it, Tina, is that I started off alleviating red meat. And then I went from alleviating red meat to um, I was only eating white meat. So chicken, um, turkey, pork, and then I was like, no, I, I don't want that either. And then I'm like, well, what about fish? You know, what about the little fishies? And then, and truthfully, and, and please don't think like I, I'm weird or anything, but I stopped eating fish because I thought our oceans are so polluted. I didn't want to eat the fish. And it's like a lot of times I was doing some research. A lot of times people become vegetarian because they don't like the, the unethical treatment of the animals. And whatever reason you pick, whatever diet you're on, again, the main idea here is to make sure that you have a well-balanced diet that works for you. Because I'm telling you right now, as I get older, my body changes and my body changes how it processes my food. I, when I was younger, I could eat anything and I wouldn't, and, and I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't gain weight. Now I look at food and I gain weight. And so it's something that with my age, I've had to have a, um, yeah, I understand how you feel. It is true. Yeah. And I don't ever like want to make anybody feel bad about their choices, whether or not you want to eat meat or eat anything like that. So I'm not sitting here preaching the, the intention of vegetarianism. I'm just letting you know why I did. But, um, I totally forgot what I was saying now. I, I, I deviated too much on that one. So I became a vegetarian. Now, here's the thing. It's like on Mondays, I have been cooking for you all. And while it's been really fun, it has been a little difficult for me to make that transition over to the other side of my kitchen and then try to talk to you, try to have this, um, this platform of a morning show while cooking. So I came up with an alternative. But first, we're going to look at a comment from Tracy. It says, I enjoy some meat, but I have um, bought vegetarian, vegan foods that I really enjoy. My problem is iron deficiency. I have, a, I have to supplement a lot due to gastric surgery. Yes. And that's just the whole thing, Tracy. It's, it's most, I mean, your nutrients are more important than anything else. And I actually, when I, before my hysterectomy, I was so anemic that I almost had to have a blood transfusion because of, um, I had fibroids. And so I had years of just problems. And so regardless if I had a been eating meat or not i it was to that point where it was just it was so bad in fact they almost canceled my surgery but thankfully i got my iron up enough that i was able to have my surgery but when i go back to the doctor on the 7th i do want them to do a blood test because i want to see where my iron is but i have been anemic a lot my life so I can usually tell the telltale signs if I am anemic but anywho getting back to um what I was saying again I totally forgot where I was going oh <laughs> man sometimes I come on these and I am just so excited to share so many things with you and my brain goes so fast all the thoughts in my head are trying to get out at once so what I have done in order to kind of help out a little bit and to give you a little bit more glimpse on like dishes that I eat or recipes that I really like, I started a Pinterest board just for the recipes that we talk about on the morning live show. So we are going to take a look at that. If I can, here we go. I 
just love technology. Um, Riley says, I have been vegan for over a year and I absolutely love it. It is one of the best choices I've ever made in my life. Yes. And you know what, Riley? I have gone between being a vegetarian and a vegan. I just love cheese. And I know that there is vegan cheese. And so it's something that I probably could make that next step. But just alleviating the meat has, it really, it's been really beneficial for me personally. So now let's take a look at the Pinterest board that I made just for our morning show. And here's some of the um, recipes that I really like. And these are things that I have taken pictures of for a while. So it's not something that, that I just ate over the weekend. But I do want to show you a couple of my favorites. And let's see how I can do this. All right. So this one was like a lettuce wrap that I put together. And this is butter lettuce right here. And what I have on the inside is I have avocado. I have chickpeas. And then I have bean sprouts, alfalfa sprouts. I have some cheese sprinkled on there. And then, of course, I have my sriracha. And these were so yummy. I absolutely love it. Oh, and another thing that I have on here is uh, like a little hummus. And hummus, any kind of beans, I eat a lot of chickpeas. I eat a lot of hummus. That is all really high in um, iron and very good nutrition. So this is one of the things that I have on here. Now let's see how I go back. Oh, nope. Oh, hold on. We have a technical difficulty. So let me go over here. I'm going to have to figure. Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. I have to show you this because I am such a sucker for tennis shoes. But look how cute these shoes are. Oh, my goodness. These are, I am going to, those are just so cute. And if I could find those, I would buy those. But let's get back to the recipes. I tell you, you just put a cute pair of sneakers in front of me and I am going to be all about it every single time. So now another recipe that I want to share with you is this right here. This is just basically, I, I labeled it as adult chicken nuggets. But what this is, these are plant-based chicken nuggets, which I eat a lot. I just have white rice, avocado, and then I put on um, that Japanese hot sauce and such an easy meal just to throw together. This one right here, I love breakfast for dinner. And since I am a vegetarian and not a vegan, I have some scrambled eggs with feta cheese, just throw some avocado on top with some sriracha. And this right here is croissant bread. And if I could, I can't find it. It really makes me sad, but Sprouts no longer has that. So if I could find some croissant bread, I would be all about that. But that is, that's just a typical dinner that I'll eat. Now, this right here, this is, this was a great stir fry that I put together that I thought um, sounded good and I tried it and it was great. So what it is, I have a little bit of shallots cut up in here with some cabbage, some broccoli and some chickpeas. And I put it in just a little bit of oil, but it wasn't really coming together like a real stir fry that I wanted it to be. So I got some veg some vegetable stock. I poured that in. I steamed it up a little bit. And then I put that over white rice. And that was amazing. That was really good. Now, this is what I had for... Um, I had this for my liner because I only really eat... Um, I eat one big meal a day. And this was my one big meal that I ate on Friday because Saturday I went yeah on Friday so I did on one of the lives where I actually cooked I did the cauliflower sriracha honey cauliflower to base you where you cut up your cauliflower and then you have honey uh, olive oil and sriracha you coat it you put it in the oven and you bake that and it is amazing so I made tacos out of it. And I just grabbed a couple of corn tortillas and I like my corn tortillas warmed up over an open flame. I have the honey maple sriracha cauliflower, 
with some avocado and then some queso cheese. And I put some sriracha on that because you know I put it on everything. And this was such a good taco deal, a meal. I mean, it was a really good dinner. So I wanted to show you that because sometimes when we think about going and having a vegetarian diet or like a vegan diet, we think about like everything we can't eat. Like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to have tacos anymore, or I'm not going to be able to have lasagna anymore, or this anymore, or that anymore. But a plant-based diet is so prevalent these days that you can find recipes and you can make different things of just about anything. And so those are typically how I, that's typically how I eat. I mean, that is something that I have eaten and that's how what, and that is how my diet looks. That's what I'm trying to say. So those are um, some recipes. And like I said, I did start a new Pinterest board just for our Mondays, just for recipes that I share. So what I'm going to be doing next Monday, because again, I love our little cooking um, Mondays, is I'm going to cook something over the weekend, um, like a new recipe or something like that. And I'm going to share it with you on Monday. I think it's going to be a little bit um, easier for me. It's going to flow a little bit better. And so that's how we're going to be incorporating cooking into our Mondays. Because this is all about, um, this is all about, you know, experimenting and making this morning show better and better and better with each and every video. Riley says, just in case you're ever curious, nutritional yeast is actually cashew and actually cashews make a very good cheesy substitute. My husband makes a delicious cashew cheese, um, cashew risotto ravioli. Ooh, I really didn't say that very well. So let me say that again. It says, just in case you're ever curious, nutritional yeast and actually cashews make a good cheesy substitute. My husband makes a delicious cashew risotto ravioli. It sounds amazing. And that's, again, what we think of, what we think of when we, th um, we think of like a vegetarian or a vegan diet is just eating like raw vegetables and being really bland. And it is 100% anything but that. It is, it's just yummy. So you have to find what works for you. You have to find what diet makes you feel good. And I cannot stress enough the importance of a food diary. I mean, we, we have a journal for everything else. We need to have a journal for our foods. We need to know how we feel when we eat a food. Because believe it or not, your body is going to react to it. I can... And here's what happens to me. It's like if I eat a real heavy kind of bread lunch dinner, because again, I eat one big meal a day and it's usually about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I have a very small healthy breakfast. I have my large dinner lunch thing. And then I have typically for dinner, I'll have a cup of yogurt with a cut up apple with granola. I mean, I eat really light for dinner. But if I eat something with a lot, a lot of bread, because I made myself a really yummy chicken, um, fake chicken hamburger, fake chicken sandwich the other day with the ciabatta bread buns. And I'm like, because I, I love bread. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I'm just going to treat myself. And I ate it all. I, within 30 minutes, could not keep my eyes open. I was, I was out. I was out for a 15, 20 minute nap because of the way my body processes bread. So I can't eat bread. I just have to eat it in smaller doses than this ginormous chicken sandwich. So you have to keep track of how the food you eat make you feel. And you just have to be willing to substitute other things, try new things, but you have to find that diet that works best for you.
And if it's a vegetarian or a vegan diet, I 100% support that. And you will find um, plenty of nutrition in other products. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, a little bit different thing that I did this Monday than I've done any other Monday is that before I even started my morning show, I had my weekly podcast already up and posted to both iTunes, Spotify, and here on YouTube. And I just wanted to go over and I wanted to tell you a little bit about the subject that we talked about today. And if you're not aware, I have a podcast that I do with my oldest son, Robert. And every other week, we trade off subjects that we talk about. And it was my week to come up with my subject. And my subject was, um, it is time to tell your inner voice to shut the beep up. Okay. I talked about having a critical inner voice because we all have inner voices. All right. Our brain talks to us an incredible 4,000 words a minute. And let me put this into context for you. The president of the United States does his, um, his yearly um, presidential speech, state of the union speech. That's what it's called. And it typically consists of 6,000 words and it takes the president and I'm not going to call him a he because one day we are going to have a she president, but it takes the president one hour to read this speech with 6,000 words. It takes us one minute to tell ourselves 4,000 words. So the power of your inner voice is way more than what we think it is. So when our inner voice turns critical, it can do way more damage than what you think it can. So on today's podcast, what I did is I actually broke down you know, what is an inner voice? You know, what exactly is it? Then I broke down, um, you know, why do some people have critical inner voices and some people don't? And, you know, it's very easy if you had a childhood, if you had a traumatic childhood, absolutely 100%, you're, you're are going to have a critical inner voice. But also that if you've had a great childhood, but then you have like depression or anxiety, you, chances are you're going to have a critical inner voice. Or if you're in a relationship with a narcissistic person, narcissistic person, you're going to end up having a negative um, or a critical self voice because that's what you're being told. So I talked about like where it came. And then I talked about some tips on how to start your journey of changing your critical inner voice to a positive inner voice. And it's not like, it's not, everybody suffer, Everybody has the same sort of like balance. Everybody has critical self-thoughts and everybody has positive self-thoughts. And it's the important thing is on how to balance them, okay? When your critical inner voice becomes the main voice, your positive inner voice gets drowned out. So you want to make sure that you are able to control this critical inner voice, keep it in check, and then you have to keep this balance of both positive and negative. So that's what I talked about this week. And it's, it's really cool. I really like talking about subjects like that because it's very personal to me and it's very near and dear to me. And it's personally near and dear to me is because I suffered so many years and decades with the most horrendous critical self-talk, the most abusive inner voice. And to me, it's been very liberating being able to be like, yo, you know what? I am not going to allow myself to be mean to myself anymore. And it's been freeing and liberating and it is something that I still, I wouldn't say struggle with because I think that that's a really harsh word, but it's something that I still have to be very aware of. I have to stay in constant, 
I constantly have to watch out for those signs of where my little critical inner voice is like trying to get some attention. And sometimes I wake up and that critical inner voice is like sitting right there waiting for me. I'll wake up and first thing in the morning, it will be like, no, you know what? You shouldn't do this. Why are you doing that? You don't deserve this. Blah, 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 blah. And I've gotten to the point where when I wake up, if I start in on that, I will instantly be like, no, I don't have time for you. You know what? You serve me no good. I don't want you in my life. And then I will purposely start telling myself positive things, you know, like, no, Lonnie, you know what? You can do it. You have, have faith in yourself. You know, you're, you're a strong person. You are capable of doing hard things and I get better every single day, which is the dove um, thing. And that's what I have to do. And I, again, I become so passionate over this subject because it is such an important subject. And it is a subject that, um, that we have a tendency to hide because we think we're the only ones that do that to ourselves or we think that we, it makes us weak or you know it makes us vulnerable. And it doesn't make us any of those. It just makes us human. And Kelly says, yes, we are our own worst critics and yes, it can be abusive. Absolutely. And on the podcast, it, I do go over like some examples of like, if you look in yourself in the mirror and you're like, I don't like what I see, that's a critical self inner voice. I mean, that is being mean to yourself. You know, I look in the mirror and I'm like, mm, those roles weren't, you know, and I, and I say this because I am very critical of my own um, body. It, it, it's just what it is. I am, I am super critical of my, my, my body. And it could be body dysmorphia. It could be, you know, I went as a kid, I had an eating disorder. So it is something that I, um, I work on constantly. And so I can sit there and I can look in the mirror and be like, oh, I don't like the way my stomach looks. You know, I, I, I just don't like it. And then I have a choice. Do I sit there and be like, well, Lonnie, you're a failure. You let yourself go. You're this, you're that. Or do I look at myself in the mirror and be like, you know what, Lonnie? Yeah. You know what? Your shape is different than it was when you're 20, but that doesn't make it bad. You still have your health. You're still breathing. You still have life to live. Stop being so critical on yourself. And that's what I do. That is the difference between looking at myself in the mirror and telling myself that I am, you know, I don't like what I see to having that, that inner self voice where it's like, yeah, you know what? You might not look like you did, but you still got life in you. So, you know, be okay with it. And I just think that the more we talk about these things, the more that we are there for each other, the more that we can kind of like, just kind of be like, oh, wow, yeah. No, I caught myself telling myself that the other day. Okay, yeah, no, I need to stop doing that. The more that we can just kind of spread a little bit more of self-love and self-compassion and just be a little bit nicer to ourselves. And to me, that is at the end of the day is what is the most important. I mean, yes, finding cute shorts at Marshalls is important, but your mental health is the main focus of what really is important and the more I can share and the more I can tell you about my own growth is why I do it so like I said just so you know you're not alone Brandon just walked by so that you know you're not alone and that you're not the only person who thinks like that so I always say that um I always say that you shouldn't talk you shouldn't allow yourself to talk to yourself in any other way that you would allow somebody else to talk to you. So, you know, you had that one bully in high school. You had that one person you worked with that you didn't really care for. You had that one person who's always giving you that snide look. If those words came out of their mouths, you would be like, oh, no, you're not allowed to talk to me like that. But when those words come out of our own mouths, we're like, Hmm, I guess it must be true because I'm saying it. And I'm telling you right now, it's not true. So 
put that into perspective and just work on that on a daily basis because I'm telling you right now, my friends, it will make a world of difference on your overall happiness. Because another thing that I, I read that when I was researching the subject is that our lives are is based upon the perception of our mind. If we have a negative self-thought, we're going to perceive our world, our life as negative. If we have a positive self-talk, we are going to perceive our lives as positive. And again, not every single moment of every single day is fun filled full of, you know, um, butterflies and birds chirping around, but we don't have to have that, that self voice that's telling us that everything is bad either. Again, it's a balance and we need to find that balance. So I am, oh, you know what I didn't do? Darn it. Let me do this really quick. I did not, uh, did not show you the outfit that I am wearing to San Francisco tomorrow. So let me pull this up really quick because it is super cute. And let me give you an idea of what I'm wearing. Hi. Uh, and I'm in tears. I needed this today. Oh, Courtney, honey. I am so glad that I, that I um, talked about that then because it's the truth. And you know, and I want, I, I think you are amazing. I think you are an absolute beacon of just everything awesome. And you need to be telling yourself those exact same words every morning. And there is nothing wrong with telling ourselves that we are amazing. And there's nothing wrong with telling ourselves that we are okay. Because you have to understand, I grew up, um, I grew up in a, with an ideology that any time that you like had like any sort of neg positive self-thought, it was almost like, um, I don't know. I, I, when I grew up, I always associated like positive self-talk with like something bad's going to happen. And so I always kind of like kept a negative kind of self-talk in order to not have like disappointment. I don't know. It's just, it's crazy the reasons why we do what we do. But it is something that I have had to learn later on in life through my sober journey, through this journey, is that we are allowed to tell ourselves positive things. So if you're out there and you feel guilty for telling yourself that you're amazing, that in itself is a problem. And you need to tackle that in order to get to that positive self-thought. So, man, I am so glad I talked about that. So let me show you what I'm wearing. I got a new pair of, so I'm, I'm switching from super heavy to just, to just let you see this. I got the high rollers, but I got them in brown. And I thought that this would look super cute. It's a really cool brown, soft, soft denim. So I'm going to wear the brown high roller jumpsuit. Um, and I'm going to put a little white tank top underneath with my Jaden platforms. And then it's going to be cold tomorrow. So I'm going to wear my Pippa Peckable puffer jacket over the top of that. Because believe it or not, the high tomorrow is supposed to be 60. So it's going to be super, super um, jacket weather tomorrow, but I'm excited. And I know that with the, with the jumpsuit, I'll have to take my jacket off to go to the bathroom, but I'm willing to sacrifice that in order to, um, in order to have a cute outfit. It's called style. <laughs> so I am, um, gosh, I'm going to miss you all tomorrow. I'm telling you that right now. I absolutely love our mornings together. You bring me so much joy. And yeah, I will take lots of pictures. So on Wednesday when I come back, again, we are doing the nude lip. So I will have no lipstick on when I start on Wednesday. But we'll do the nude lip right away because sometimes it really bothers me. Like I'll be doing my video for like an hour or like for 30 minutes and then I'll be like, why did I wait so long to put my lipsticks on? 
Riley says, oh my God, such a cute outfit. Clothes brings us power. Absolutely, Riley. That is 100% the truth. Um, Kelly says, I'd love a 60 degree day. It's so hot, humid here, and our air quality is out of dangerous again. Oh, I know. And then Kara says, I'm going to be, um, it's going to be 95 tomorrow. All right. You know what? Courtney says, love the weather, the city, love the weather in the city. Absolutely. The saying for San Francisco is, is that, um, this is the saying, and it goes, the coldest winter I ever lived through was a summer in San Francisco. So it is just everything cold and chilly. And I'm so excited to be able to wear my jacket again. And yeah, I'm going to roll up the bottoms of my, um, my jumper. And I'm good. So that way my platforms really show and I'm excited. And looking back at it, I remember one time when Robert and I used to go to the city way before this whole journey of self-expression and just self-love and self-compassion. I remember going to the city and agonizing for weeks over what outfit I was going to wear because I did not feel confident in anything I wore. Everything I wore, um, I thought somebody else was, was prettier and I thought somebody else was um, just more stylish than I was. And I look back at who I was, and this is probably maybe five years ago, and I'm like, wow, I was a bundle of insecurity. I used to pick out an outfit, and then I would change it and change it, and then the very last minute while I'm trying to get ready to, you know, to leave for the airport, I would change it again. I wouldn't like my outfit. The entire time we were there, I would see a, a lady, and I would be like, oh my gosh, she has such a cute outfit. Then I would spend the majority of the day trying to recreate her outfit, and it wasn't so much her outfit, but it was her vibe. It was her confidence. It's the way that she wore her clothes, and I look back at that, and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because I remember seeing this lady who was um, walking in front of me, and she had on a pair of jeans rolled up with a pair of Doc Martens, and I was like, if only I could be that cool. And now like, now I look at myself and I'm like, I, my style hasn't changed. My confidence has changed. My style was always this, but now I give myself the permission to wear it and to be confident. And that is what I want you to find in your style. Your style has nothing to do with clothes. I mean, cute clothes are cute clothes, but it's how you feel when you wear them is all that matters. Because if you don't have that self-love, if you don't have that positive inner voice, if you don't have any of that, no matter what you put on, you're going to criticize yourself and you're never going to find, um, and you're never going to find a style that fits for you because you're not going to allow yourself the moment of being like, Hey, yeah. I like that. So I know I went off on one more rant before I left, but I think it is an important rant. And it's about allowing yourself to find that style that makes you happy. Um, let's see here. Valerie says, cute, cute outfit, Lonnie. Have fun. Can't wait to see all the videos you take tomorrow. I know. So I'm going to be taking all sorts of pictures and then you're going to follow along in pictures and then I'm going to be making my videos. I can't wait. Um, let's see here. Now people say that about you. <laughs> now people envy you and hopefully they envy my, um, you know what? I'm just going to say, thank you. You know what? There's where my growth is. I'm just going to say, thank you, Valerie. Courtney says San Francisco is one stylish city. Yes, it is. And you know what? Here's the thing. It's like now I might not on paper be as stylish as another woman, but I guarantee you, I will challenge you for um, confidence. I will be just as confident in no matter what I'm wearing as the next lady. And that is where I have succeeded. Kara says, I remember you doing this when you first started your podcast. Um, the community has changed your self-confidence energy. It is infectious. You go, girl. Absolutely. And Kara, like you said, I mean, it, what's really cool is that when you told me the other day how you have healed in like listening to my stories 
And to me, that brings me a lot of joy because I know what it was like being who we were when we were younger and any sort of like growth or healing that I can offer you makes my day all the better. So there you go. So that's it, my friends. Um, please take care of yourself tomorrow. I will be back on Wednesday with all the pictures. Um, Lord willing, everything goes good. I will be back here um, Wednesday morning. Ah, gosh. All right. So remember, be bright, be bold, be brave. Courtney, you get that negative, critical self-talk under control. You tell yourself what an amazing goddess you are every single day. That goes to, for all of you. And I will see you all on Wednesday. Bye, everyone.